مولايا صلي وسلم دائما ابدا in this blessed month of zul hajj so there are so many things to talk about obviously never the time is sufficient or enough in our life even to have the blessings of this blessed month um few things about the greatness of the month of ramadan and then month of zul hajj um as we are very motivated in ramadan but this particular month has each month has significance but this one has much more than what we even comprehend and um this this is a hadith from bukhari from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says ما العمل في ايام العشر رفض من عمل في هذه قالوا ولا الجهاد قال ولا الجهاد الا رجل خرج يخاطر بنفسه وماله فلم يرجع الشيء which means prophet sallam said was ask that is any act more than this blessed or more rewarding than this month nabi sallam said ما عمل في ايام العشر افضل من العمل في هذه there's no deed and action a person does is more superior than this days of 10 days of first 10 days of month of zul hajj قالوا the companion said ولا الجهاد or the jihad even because for them fighting in the cause of allah with the body in war was bigger than anything nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says wala al jihad not even jihad fighting for the cause of allah except one condition the only one exemption he mentioned illa except rajul the man kharaja yakhatir bi nafsi he got out of his home putting his life his self in danger khatir khatra in urdu we say khatra in arabi khatra ya khatir be nafsi his own being existence his own body and soul wa malihi and his wealth means he gave up falam yarja bi shay and then he did not return back with anything means a person who have a house wealth family children everything what we have as we know each one of us have and our wealth in the bank and if we go out fighting for the cause of allah giving all of our wealth in the sadaqa and do not return back it means dying in the path of allah a martyr in the jihad with giving up everything which he possesses so that person is only one which comes above the 10 days of worship in another hadith and there are many hadith in this that each day of the first 10 day of zul hajj as allah has taken the oath about the allah has taken one says qasam about anything that is sufficient for all existence allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al fajr says wal fajr by the dawn wala yalin and the ten nights wal fajr wala yalin ashr wa shaf and the odd wal witr even in odd So Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking oath by days by nights in wal fajr wal ayal in ashr wa shaf wal witr wal layl idha yas and by the night as it passes the night of muzdalifa So Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala took five times an oath on something must be very important because all days belong to Allah all nights belong to Allah all moments belong to Allah so if something Allah is taking oath about it and all the mufassirin agrees that this was about the first 10 days of zul hajj so if prophet is saying that there is nothing superior than a person giving up his wealth and life and allah is taking multiple times oath by this by this by fajr by the dawn the fajr prayer fajr prayer is every day but then this particular fajr prayer of the one which we do in mina and then we do it when the muzdalifa when we come back this is the dawn where allah subhanahu wa taala come closest to the humanity it's very important to know that you know when we ask somebody to come to visit us or we visit somebody or we want to go and do something and it's something which is not we think is worthy we don't go there we don't do that why we think it's not worth our time right 
most important commodity a person has in their existence is the time. And these are the important times. Allah has made certain, because whole year belongs to Allah, whole life and creation belongs to Allah. But Allah has especially made these certain moments which are more superior than the others. In, in Ramadan, when we fast, each fast is an obligatory fast. But in Zul Hajjah, the first 10 days of fasting is optional fasting. But the reward, according to one of the hadiths from Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah, some say it's a Darif hadith, but again, it's a Fazail hadith. It says, each day of fast in the first 10 days of Dhul Hajjah, this month, is equal to one year of reward of fasting. And each night in the month of Dhul Hajjah is like, not exactly, it's like Laylat al Qadr. We don't pay attention. I mean, I never did in my entire life think of that deeply about it. But the fact is that these are the most precious days and the most precious nights which we have. Then if each night is equal to Laylat al-Qadr night and each day is equal to one year of fasting, so we get a 10 years of fasting. And on the 9th of Zul Hajjah, when we fast, it is equal to fasting a year before and a year after and wipes the sin of a last year and current year. So we are already having a year and we have passed. Our sins will be wiped off if we fast on the 9th of the Zul Hajjah. When people are in the Arafah, our sins are getting washed. It is also a very unusual month in which all the acts of worship are multiplied in the rewards. In Ramadan we do fasting, in this month we fast. But this is optional, that is obligatory. In Ramadan we do sadqa and zakat. And here Prophet is saying, even if you give, when you do nafil, as Imam was telling about, giving a charity, a sadqa, every day we should give something, because each day is equal to a year worth of sadqa and charity. And, and the blessing is much more. So we should divide, or we can make the niyyah, because sometimes you cannot break it out to make the intention. That Allah, I'm giving it for the first 10 days of Ramadan and give it up, or for 10 days of Zul Hajjah. So last 10 days of uh, Ramadan is important, the first 10 days of Zul Hajjah important. When one usual significance of these 10 days is that Musa alayhi salam, when he went to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Tur, he went in Zul, Zul Qa'dah, he spent 30 days there and he extended, Allah made him extend 10 more days and those were the first 10 days of Zul Hajjah when he received the Torah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why another significance of this beautiful month of the importance of the prophets before us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشَّهُورِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَتْنَاشُنَا شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابَ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ دِينَ الْقَيَّمِ so this is, Ramadan is not one of the hurmat month, but Zul Hajjah, Zul Qadah, Zul Hajjah, Muharram and Rajab, these four months are. So Zul Hajjah is one of those months. So it is the special month in the significance of the sacredness. These are the chosen month by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah made this month. There must be something very special about it, which as a Muslim, we should appreciate our Prophet Musa alayhi salam before Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the Muslim of his time, they received the Torah in this time. And we got the Hajj. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded, the first house Allah ever created for mankind to come for the Hajj is in the valley of Bakkah. So whoever had the ability to do the Hajj should perform the Hajj. And Nabi Sallallahu said Umrah to Umrah and Hajj to Hajj. Umrah to Umrah, a person perform a minor visitation to the Kaaba it wipes the sin between two Umrah. And when the Hajj, he says, the return for the Hajj is complete wipe off of the sin as if a newborn baby. Hajj al mabru So, and we can do another way of Hajj, you know. There's a Nafil Hajj. What is a Nafil Hajj? Look at your father's face in the morning every day and a smile. You get a confirmed Hajj Nafil Maqbul. No efforts, only few muscles of the face. Look at your parents and give a smile. 
You got a Hajj Maqbul. Sahabi asked, Ya Rasulullah, if one does more than once, he said, Allah has no limit to his treasure, so keep looking at your parents and keep earning the Hajj. What an easy Hajj, right? The reward equal to a Nafal Hajj, not the obligatory. Obligatory is one time. And the, any, you see, there's so much easy way to get things by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need to have wait for the Arafah. Like every ninth of every month is a ninth, right? The ninth of Yawm Arafah and the month of Zul Hajj, nothing matters. We can stand all day, all year in the Maidan Arafah, it's not Hajj. But if you leave before the ninth of Zul Hajj, we miss the Hajj. And what is the time between Fajr to the Maghrib? It's standing. The greatest ritual or the a part of the Hajj is being in the Arafah. Just standing. If a person walks by the boundaries of Arafah, that person is in Hajj. How easy it is. What is to be done? The thing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel in Laylatul Qadr. In Quran it starts revelation to and what the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And he himself came for that. Just imagine. Jibreel brought the Quran beginning. Allah revealed this ayah on Rasulullah and himself being on the Arafah. This revelation came in Yawm Arafah, in the Yawm Jum'ah. So a Jewish person asked, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and this hadith come from Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu also, that he said if he had received this verse among revelation, we would have made it an Eid for us, a celebration of happiness. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked him, which verse is that? I know what you're talking about. And he said, you're talking about this ayah, al yawmu akmaltu lakum deenakum, today I have perfected your deen. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَةِ And I've completed my favor upon you. وَرَدَيْتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ I have accepted Islam as your way of life. وَرَدَيْتُ I have agreed with this. رَدَيْتُ لَكُمْ For you. Islam, the way of life of peace, as a way of life for you. Subhanallah. Who is bringing this ayah? Think Jibreel, this ayah Allah is directly talking to Rasulullah. Al Yawmu Akmal Tu. Allah coming closest to the mankind and humanity, and Rasulullah was standing in the Maidan Arafah, and this revelation came upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected our deen in Maidan Arafah for us, and the Quranic revelation completed. The beginning happened in Ramadan, the final complete, complete, completion happened in Yom Arafah. Should we not celebrate it? A Jewish person recognize that. So Umar ta'ala and Abbas ta'ala both say, we know that and we understand it and Juma is our Eid also. Some people say there's only two Eid in Islam. Wrong. Hadith says, Sahabi said that. Either Umar and Abbas, and Abbas was wrong or you were wrong. I can imagine who could be more wronger than the one. <laughs> so, some people are very, you know, I said, don't want to comment. They just do not comprehend, you know. They do not comprehend faith. When Imam Hussein was in Karbala, there were 3,000 half of the Quran in the Yazid army, and there were 300 fuqah. And they combined gave a fatwa, kill Hussein. This is what Islam is all about. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he agreed to make a treaty with Mawiyah radiallahu anhu's army, both were Muslims. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa called Mawiyah group as rebellious against Ali. He called him Baghi, the group of rebellions, because Ali was Amir al-Mu'mineen radiallahu anhu. So when he agreed to have a peace treaty, so not to have a bloodshed of Muslim, a group among with the Ali radiallahu anhu, they broke the treaty, they broke the bayah, they are called khawarij. Khawarij means, the kharij means the one who ex en entered and left. He entered, the, they entered the bayah of Ali radiallahu anhu and they left. And the accusation was what? 
you made a arbitrator between you and Muawiyah radiallahu anhu's army because you knew Muawiyah was on the wrong side. So they left and there were about 10,000 of those. And they were Hufaz. And how well reversed they were. They would read Quran and fast in the day and stay up on Musalla and sleep on the Musalla at night. Could you imagine this? How pious those could be? And they would carry swords in their neck. They would sleep on the Musalla, which is forbidden by the way. Musalla is not the place to sleep on. They were so extreme in their understanding and interpretation of faith. They say, Ali, you have done shirk. Why? Because Allah is the one who is the judge. Why did you make people to be the judge of arbitration? So when Abbas told him to go and talk to these people, they are misguided. So he asked them, why you are against Ali? Why did you give this fatwa about Ali? Who's the first person to accept Islam? They said he made the arbitration. It is Allah who is the judge of all. See how extreme person can do. So he asked him the ayah from Surah Al-Ma'idah, Surah Al-Nisa. That when husband and wife have a dispute, they should be hakam from men's side and hakam from the woman's side. And they should arbitrate between them. So he said, do you believe in this ayah of the Quran? They said, yes, absolutely. It is Quran. He said, if Allah is worried about one married family, husband, wife, and appoint an arbitrator, here were thousands of Muslims on both sides were getting killed. Do you not think Ali would have understood this? So out of 10,000, 6,000 left the group. And there were a few other questions, but this is just for the explanation. How a person who is so pious and righteous can explode his body, go kill people, Attack Ali radiallahu anhu. So this is how people could be what you call crazy. Because not everybody comprehend. So if you are happy, they say, Oh, there is only two Eid in Islam. There is not even a single Eid in the Quran mentioned for Muslim. Only Eid mentioned in the Quran is in Surah Maidah, where Isa alayhi salam was asked by his people that if you bring us a food from the Jannah, we will make this our day of Eid. For awwalina wa akhirina means for all of our people from the beginning to the end. That's why they celebrate Sunday. So just to understand, Islam is a religion which brings people in. And then this is also the month of sadaqah and khairat and hasanat and sacrifice. There's no other day you get the reward of udiha, qurbani, as we get it in this time. And Nabi Wasallam was asked, that those people who cannot afford what they should do. He said they should not trim their hairs and nails along with the first of, moon, of the moon is sighted till the Eid so that they will have the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's much more to talk about. Time is limited. And he was asked about those who do not sacrifice slaughter animal while they are able to do so. He said if a person has the ability to afford to slaughter animal, and does not do it, should not come near our Musalla on the Eid day. And that Udiha, which is Qurbani in Urdu, sacrifice or slaughtering in English, must be done after the Eid Salah. So most of us, you know, we send money back to Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and other countries. Make sure they sacrifice after your Eid, not before your Eid. Otherwise, it will not be valid. It will be a Sadqa, but not the Udiha, the Qurbani. So when the companion had a little baby lamb and had a bigger one so he slaughtered it without realizing it and when rasulullah gave this khutbah and he said ya rasulullah i did my sacrifice already so nabi Allah asked him do you have another animal he said really there is a little one it's not really mature enough to be slaughtered he asked him the age he said six months he said fine it will be acceptable slaughter that for the qurbani and the other one would be a sadaqah and was asked, what is the reason for this? Why do we slaughter? He said, this is the sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salam, abikum Ibrahim, when he took his son Ismail alayhi salam, so there is a logic behind it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a ram from Jannah to be slaughtered there, which is goat or lamb, which is allowed whatever animal we eat. And he said, what is the benefit for us in it? Before the blood of the animal of the slaughter, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, facing towards Mecca, Qibla, 
you slaughter the before the drop of the blood of animal hit the ground your sins are forgiven for each drop of blood we get reward for each hair of the animal we get reward on the day of judgment it will help us to transport from the sarat the bridge which we have to cross on what side is the hell and other side is the jannah so that animal we sacrifice is it right so do not be so miser and you can slaughter in, you know, there are countries which charge you $100 per goat and there are countries which slaughter goat for $30, $40. Whatever the affordability is, we should do it. And for living, each adult affordable person should do his own. What is the affordability? A person should be sahib and nisab. And if you become sahib and nisab compared to zakat, you have to be wealthy for a year to be able to give the zakat on the leftover money or above the nisab of seven and a half ounces of gold, 52 ounces of silver. But if you become a knight before the E, rich, and rich enough to afford an animal, then sacrifice an animal. There are a lot of details, inshallah. It, you know, this is a really very important 10 days. We should have regular session to comprehend and understand our faith. It's very significant activity which we can do. And we let go of them. It, any, it, you know, smile is even a charity. So do sadaqah. A smile is a charity. Kindness to remove a thorn from the path of a person's walking is a sadaqah. So every little thing which we do for the caring for the other is a sadaqah. Who should sacrifice? A Muslim, a adult, a intellectually competent, the person who have what we call not mentally competent, they are not required. And person should be resident where they are living. If they can afford to send the money to the other place. And the animal should not be defective. Animal should be full mature. Why? Because we are sacrificing it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even if you put garland and things in that Animal, don't take it the money of it. Give it as a sadqa because everything belong to animal goes as a sadqa. And if a person can afford, it is recommended, and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, give one third as a sadqa to poor, one third to your family and friend, one third to keep for yourself. But if a person cannot do that, he thinks that my family will be needy, one can keep whole animal for themselves. And the scholar says, do not give a skin of the animal as a service charges. That is separate. Some people say, take the skin and the other head of the animal or the, or the, or the you know, the, uh, what do you call the um, feet? feet. <laughs> pie. <laughs> I was looking for word pie. <laughs> Don't give pie as a sacrifice. <laughs> it is to be eaten or to be given, but not as a service charge. Service charge is separate. <laughs> And uh, may Allah make it easy. I mean, and, uh, in, in a goat and a lamb, there's one person per share. But in a cow and in a camel, seven people could be partner. But somehow we have a fixation. You know, I, I had this wrong understanding that you can only do one share in the cow. Actually, you can do the whole cow by yourself if you can afford it. You can have 100 cows by yourself or you can sacrifice 100 camel. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, when he went to the hajj, how many camel he took? And how many Ali radiallahu ta'ala no brought? So 36 were brought by uh, uh, Rasulullah from Medina. And total were 100. The Ali radiallahu ta'ala no brought with him from Yemen. And he mixed them together. Rasulullah slaughtered 63. And rest of the 37 were slaughtered by Ali radiallahu anhu. So Rasulullah sacrificed one for his own lifetime. And when he was in Medina, he was doing slaughtering. So some brother sent me a message. Oh, I understand Arabic like you understand Urdu. And I do not find anywhere that the people who are not in Hajj should not make the sacrifice. Subhanallah. You see, social media is really getting away with everything. So next time, don't fast. There was a YouTube. You will see somebody said, there is no Juma khutbah and Salah in, in Islam. There is no Salah in Islam. You should just say, Allahu Akbar, you're done. Some people, this is where we need to be very mindful and educated about our faith. Rather than hearing from some nonsense, we should hear from the scholar of Islam. And there are people who say, you don't take qurbani all separate. If a person have a young family, he should slaughter for himself. Rasulullah did it for his whole family by himself. 
And he did one for the ummah. So all the deceased, living and dead, if you want to sacrifice as the son of the Rasulullah, one can do it, but you don't have to do it. And Rasulullah will to Ali radiallahu anhu, make two sacrifices, one for you, one for me, after I am gone. So all the deceased can be slaughtered in one with the niyyah of ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu and one for our own self. But if adults are in home and they are making a living and they are affordable, like mixed family, often subcontinent, you know, father, son, grandchildren, all living together, they all should sacrifice, not just one person. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the wisdom and ability. And there's a lot to talk about. There is so much to talk about these 10 days. We should not let go. These are the most precious, most valuable moments. And time is of essence. And time is the most important commodity in human life. We spend this time playing games, watching TV, watching movie, watching news. Wallahi, these are the few days, most precious days. And what should we do? As we see the moon of the uh, Zulhaj, we should 